Okay, so hello, my name is Remy Gonzalez, and my topic is interpersonal communication skills. But uh, my major claim is how teenagers lack interpersonal skills um, due to technology. And by teenagers, I mean a young person between the ages of 13 and 19. And interpersonal, I mean between at least two people, a like conversation or someone interaction. And communication skills is by being able to participate in thorough conversations and active listening. So engaging in the conversation rather than just like standing there and listening. And technology, I mean by computerized machines or software, such as I mean texting or Facebook or any other kinds of software. My secondary claim backing teenagers lack those personal skills is that young adults rely on communicative technology to correspond with through uncomfortable issues, which is preventing the growth in skills. A professor, Michael Weinstein, is a professor of political science in Purdue University. He um, believes that internet users will lose their savvy and skills and patience to conduct social relations in the physical like, world rather than just I mean. Um, uncomfortable, uncomfortable conversations can be held through text messages, I mean, or emails rather than in person. And there is an online poll saying that 22% use IMs to ask people out on dates or to accept them, and 13% of people use them to break up with people. Teenagers aren't learning discretion as well as from conversations held in person. They aren't learning what to say and what not to say based off of those interactions and from those tells that if you're uncomfortable, if you're rubbing yourself, if you're avoiding eye contact because you don't notice any of that through IME. Um, my second claim is competition isn't getting resolved as it used to, whether it be positive or negative competition. It's being avoided and by an Associated Press AOL poll, more than 4 out of 10 teens or 43% who use instant messages use it for things they wouldn't say in person. So they're too shy or they're not able to confront a person in public to be able to say things. So they say it in I am because they find it easier rather than confront that person. Anxiousness and other emotions aren't being experienced as much and aren't being resolved in person, in experiences. They're not learning how to take rejection properly because they're just, they're able to say it through the software and they're able to, um, they're not able to grow from it. They're just, they aren't experiencing that full anxiety because when you're in front of a person and you're asking someone out and you get that anxiety because you're in their face and eye, eye contact, you don't know if they're gonna say yes or no. And by being online, you just you just type it out and you get a response and if you don't like it, then you can simply close it. Take um, Lewis Grove, he's a 19 year old college sophomore from Eat Ohio. He said that he uses his messages for both sides of the dating cycle. He says, fear of rejection, if you're face to face, you can't close the window and disappear if you're, if you're rejected, like you could if you're in instant messaging. And confidence and other developed effects from completed confrontation aren't entirely built. So you're not growing and you're not learning how to take the rejection or taking the pride and um, if you're being like confronted. My right, third claim is internet uses Internet use harms teenagers psychologically. There is a study saying that it increases in misery, loneliness, and overall um, well-being. In response to a college survey regarding the effects of technology on interpersonal relationships and communication, many respondents spoke of a sense of isolation by this medium of like texting or IMing, and the lack of face-to-face -face contact as a contributing factor of feeling alienated or loneliness because you're not getting that physical um, connection, you're just typing it out and you don't feel as connected with the person you're talking to. And there's a major use of internet can create symptoms similar to addictions, whereas you go home and you log straight on and you're doing your work and you're logging on and you're using that constantly to get through your day. And rather than just having a conversation, because some people feel free to all this technology they felt more value in face-to-face -face contact and didn't value text messaging as much. Rather than now, text messaging, IMing, and all other um, communicative softwares become mainstream and mostly used to people. So, 
My main thing was how teenagers lack interpersonal communicative skills, and that's due to technology. My secondary claim was how young adults rely on communicative technology to correspond to uncomfortable issues. My third, my third claim was how complication wasn't getting resolved as it used to. And my last claim was how internet use harms teenagers psychologically. Thank you. Right. The problem with the proposition is that it's phrased as a question and it's got a compound statement in it. You need to simplify it. Uh, the phrasing on the secondary points is also a little bit awkward, although I think it's uh, like we had on the previous speech. It's a little bit clearer at the end than it was at the beginning of the speech. You spent a lot of time giving us some basic definitions that are probably less critical than some of the more simple ones. For instance, tell us what the communication skills are that you're saying that we're losing. That's what we really need to have defined. Uh, in the body of the speech, you do an okay job signposting the secondary points and uh, giving them numerical signposts. Um, there's always an explanation about what you're saying. But there's not always proof on what you're saying. I thought that you had some interesting statistical information to start with when you're talking about the number of people who use it to, uh, to do something like, for instance, breaking up or contacting somebody. And... <coughs> The first question that popped in my mind, well, is this up or down from the way it was before? Um, when you, you've got one statistic that says 40% use it to, do, to say something that they wouldn't have otherwise said, and I'm wondering, well, how does that mean that they are losing their communication skills? It sounds like they, maybe they're enhancing their communication skills. Before they would have said nothing, and now they're saying 40% more than they would have said in the past. I'm not sure that you're making the right inference with that data. Um, and uh, you've got one conclusionary authority who's offering an opinion on this, and I think it's, you know, I think you want to qualify that person and talk about what their uh, conclusions are based on, if you can. Um, and uh, like I said, the summary is pretty good. There's a lot of reading that's going on, although sometimes you put a little inflection here and there. Uh, I, I just thought that the proof that people are not growing and that they're uh, not really learning these skills is a little circular. It seems like you take those as presuppositions rather than offering proof for them. All right. Thank you.